Hey folks, here at OS Reviews, you're watching our hands-on review of the Sim 2 Moment Air Selfie Drone. As we introduced in the unboxing, this is meant as a casual everyday product that you would take with you in a backpack for easy transportation, let it hover and follow you around for images and selfies with friends, family, and the nature around you. It's not meant as a really serious photography and video tool like a more expensive DJI just because it doesn't have the uh, extended range of flying higher, um, of using more powerful antennas. It also doesn't have a uh, motor uh, or an optical stabilized uh, uh, video sensor. As a result, the footage will be, again, not quite as high quality. However, the pricing is going to be cheaper. It's priced at around $290, which happens to be also half the price of the Hover Camera Passport, which shares obvious DNA with this device. The Hover Camera uh, Passport is kind of the the first mainstream selfie drone, but more importantly, it has almost an identical folding design. So in many ways, you can think of the Moment Air Selfie as a next generation or kind of a clone at half the price. Um, instead of $600, you're paying less than $300 for basically identical features. And that includes a 4K sensor for capturing video and images. In addition, it has a removable battery pack uh, that can last you for about 15 minutes of flight time. And of course, it has this very safe design that's uh, protecting the, pro the propellers, almost like a book, that prevents your fingers from getting caught and objects from getting caught into it, uh, making it one of the safest drones and easiest drones to fly. It also folds open like a book, which is not only great for portability, but uh, at the same time, time, it makes it possible again for it to take off on the palm of your hand and to hover again in smaller spaces as well, including, let's say, inside of a room. So if we talk a little bit about uh, the the uh, contents of the packaging first, first of all, it comes included with a hard shell carrying case, which actually looks fairly premium and allows you to more easily store the drone along with a few accessories. It's notable that the drone can't be stored into the bag without removing the battery pack, and this is actually a safety precaution. I will also mention that only one battery is included in the packaging, um, although there are two slots, which means you have to purchase a second one if you want to get a longer flight time out of uh, you know your uh, experience with the unit. It also supports the charging dock on the side in addition to documentation and cables on the top. Um, otherwise, it comes included with a rapid charging dock, which can also take a uh, pretty uh, hefty uh, brick-like charger. It's a standard AC port, but it does use a proprietary round pin, and uh, you can charge up the 2,900 milliamp hour capacity battery in around 45 minutes, so it's actually quite quick. Alternatively, you can also charge it up using USB Type-C, or if it's plugged into the drone, you can use micro USB uh, as additional forms of charging, perhaps if you only have a cable and you are carrying a power bank around. Um, it's going to charge a little bit more slowly using Type-C and micro USB, but it does still work. Otherwise, what's interesting about the battery pack, if we kind of remove it from the drone, is that it also dubs as the power key for the unit. Um, what looks like just an LED status or indication light is also the physical power key for the entire drone. So when you put it on there, you won't find additional buttons. Essentially, you tap and hold on this for about five seconds to turn the entire drone on. Also, below the battery compartment as well, you'll find the hidden micro SD card slot. There is no built-in memory, so be sure to supplement a memory card of up to 32 gigabytes to start recording images and video files. Overall, the build of the drone I think is pretty good. It's coated in soft touch rubber in the entire frame, and although it is very lightweight, it's also quite elastic and malleable. What that means is if the device hits a hard surface like concrete or wood, it will absorb a good portion of shock, and in my testing so far, it seems to actually be quite rugged and holding up very well. On the inside, you also find access to an optical flow sensor, which is used to map out 3D space below it. As a result, it knows that it's about, let's say, five centimeters away from the surface, or if it's uh, you know, 10 feet away from a skyscraper or a building. So it will automatically detect those things and avoid collision, in addition to hover to the appropriate depth when, it, when you are trying to get it uh, to take off from a surface like your hand or from the floor. The app, which works with Android and iOS, is simply called Moment Drone. Simply tap on it and it's going to guide you through a quick setup process before launching into this pretty standard interface. You do need to connect the Wi-Fi manually and through my testing instead of uh, relying on the just simple connect key. So that's uh, maybe a software glitch at the moment, but you have to go into physical settings on your phone and find the uh, 
drone's Wi-Fi network and tap to connect to it before opening up the app. The password for the drone on default is 12345678. What we hear as that slight sound is uh, produced by the uh, optical flow slash uh, uh, ultrasonic sensor. So that's uh, how it's using the sound vibrations to detect uh, you know, depth information. You can also see a small red LED on the front of the drone to tell you that the power is indeed on. We're now able to see the viewfinder produced on the camera. So you can see here that image quality is okay, but I guess this would be one critique of uh, selfie drones in general, just like the much more expensive uh, hover camera passport, uh, even though it's a 4K sensor, um, it, the size of the sensor really isn't that large, which means that it will struggle more under low light environments. And furthermore, there's not a ton of uh, granularity that you get to work with. But that being said, it's definitely uh, you know about similar to what you may find on a high-end smartphone in terms of the overall quality. And again, in terms of the latency between the Wi-Fi, it's really not that bad. Um, there's a slight delay, but uh, again, it's not crippling. The field of view that you can see here isn't quite as wide as what you would find on an action camera or on something, again, like a DJI. It's a bit more narrow, but overall, again, it does work. So on here we see that the optical mode has been activated. There's also the GPS signal strength, which right now seems to be quite high since we are very close to close to the phone. Battery percentage just remaining and the estimated depth. So that's pretty much zero since it's on a surface on the tabletop right now. There's also the Wi-Fi signal strength connected to the phone. And over here we can start taking looking uh, at the video that we're taking uh, and go into our gallery to check out the previous images and videos. There's also the ability to flip the camera. Um, it doesn't go all the way 360 degrees of course but it allows you to quickly toggle between a few different orientations for panning shots here is the follow me mode where it will try to detect your motion and follow you around um, this is the auto landing mode this is the auto takeoff which goes to a height of roughly 1.5 meters um, at least that's the claim I can tap on the shutter key once to take an image and you can see it's pretty quick to capture a shot and then I can also tap on this key over here to take a quick 10 second video vice versa I can dig into the settings a little bit more and and to record more continuous motion uh, in terms of the video. So from here you can see that using the uh, on-screen controls, I can uh, already swipe around to navigate uh, up and down in terms of the motion of the camera. Same thing, when the drone is in the air, I can also swipe left and right using the viewfinder to uh, correspond to where the drone should move left and right in terms of its positioning. Um, since it's gonna be in a hover mode, it basically stays in one place, but you can just change the direction of the camera uh, since it's meant as, again, a selfie or more of a photography uh, tool in this sense rather than uh, as a pure uh, you know, toy that you would want to play with in terms of flying and tricks. But otherwise, there's also the ability to go through more advanced modes if you want to, again, play with this uh, as a traditional kind of drone. I can go into the rocker setting, and from here I can change into, there's different modes, a Japanese mode, an American mode, and if I want to use this, let's just say tap on uh, settings again, now we have these controls which pop on that allow me to change left, right, up, and down. Taking a look at some of the images we took, just as a discussion of the image quality, this is one that I captured outside, and you can see that the photo quality overall um, is decent. The resolution of the camera, I believe, is going to be around uh, eight megapixels. So that's, uh, you can see in broad daylight, it captures a good amount of information. It's like an action camera in the sense that it's fixed focus and not autofocus, but you can see that colors are pretty well saturated. It looks fairly realistic. Um, image quality is definitely better than video quality though, which is a little bit unfortunate. However, it is advertised as a selfie drone, and selfies are, again, photos. Um, the thing with video, like I said, it's because of the shakiness, since it isn't optically stabilized. If you are really new to flying drones like I am, then sometimes the video footage just seems you know, very shaky, and you have to process it afterwards, which can take quite a bit of time. Let's try another video. You can see that this actually looks a little better. There's more details. Colors, are again, are fairly accurate looking. There's not uh, too much too much choppiness. There is a little bit of shakiness here. Um, as a small drone, you are subject to the conditions of wind. So uh, if it's really windy, uh, you know, I got in it, I came to a point of, you know, epiphany being in the Bay Area in San Francisco, that it's commonly windy, especially at higher elevations and places where you would want to capture images and videos such as, you know, by the water or just uh, looking at the city from afar. So overall, I'd say that although the you know footage of the video is uh, quite passable, it's uh, not you know going to be outstanding. Just like with the hover camera passport, at least in videos I've seen, the quality here is quite comparable.
Other performance statistics to briefly mention, the battery life is indeed uh, around 14 minutes in my testing. I got a little less, 13 minutes, uh, when I was connected to Wi-Fi and trying it out on a windy day where it was struggling a bit more against the wind. So be sure to keep that in mind. That seems to be very average uh, compared to the hover camera uh, Passport, about the same battery performance. It's uh, significantly longer than other low-cost drones that may cost you know, $100 generic models and brands on Amazon. Uh, those tend to only last maybe seven or eight minutes, but uh, as a more expensive drone, 15 minutes seems to be you know about average. If you get into larger uh, drones which have more room for bigger battery packs, then the battery again will be longer. But on something this small, I think that uh, it's a respectable number. Um, otherwise, in terms of testing, as long as it was following me at a reasonable distance and I wasn't trying to you know push it to its upper limits and you know, fly it above the skyline, uh, connection was pretty stable on Android. I didn't have any lost connections, and you know, even if it did have a lost connection, it would land by itself as a safety precaution. So no real problems in terms of being able to follow you, uh, maybe even as a safety tool. Uh, if you are at night, you're running, and you're worried about your, your own precautions, then this may capture uh, you know, your surroundings as you're moving around, and you know it's almost like a security camera that uh, hovers above you. Um, furthermore, the performance in terms of the flight stability also seems to be quite good and the pricing in addition to the quality of the hardware certainly stands up again compared to other alternatives like the hover passport which sells for two times the price um, so that is the good thing the bad thing would be that sim 2 i think still needs a bit of work in terms of optimizing their software Examples would be the camera quality because on itself, uh, again, it's better at taking images and videos because video footage seems to be kind of grainy and a little bit shaky. Furthermore, uh, you know, the tracking features, although it works well, it's also sometimes uh, it will occasionally have some hiccups here and there. So maybe the machine learning algorithms that they're using could use you know, some improvement. I've also had an instance, just like one other reviewer has pointed out, where the optical sensor that detects the depth, even though it's using ultrasound, uh, sound waves, as opposed to something like a camera, which would struggle more in low light environments, it still gets confused occasionally. It doesn't happen very often, but maybe once in every you know, 30 times, it will misread the depth of a surface. Um, perhaps if you're on grass or something really shiny and reflective, I've had instances where it would suddenly hover, instead of 1.5 meters, it would hover 10 meters off from the ground. But then you would tap on land and then try it again and it would work perfectly the next time. So there are some inconsistencies. We're living in a reality where we have these tools that can not only capture more moments of our lives, but again, be a tool that's quite useful for safety purposes. Um, however, there needs to be a bit more optimization at the moment, and battery life, even though 15 minutes is good, uh, still, I think, should be longer if you're using this as a take it with you anywhere and at any moment's notice put it up in the air and take an image. Um, you know, compared to a traditional point and shoot camera, there is still you know, a bit of a difference there. Even though it's able to get a higher elevation and perhaps a more uh, interesting shot composition if you're looking for that. So thanks for watching this video here at OS Reviews. This has been our hands-on review of the Sim2 uh, Moment Folding Selfie Drone.